Example three using the square root property. Now you may not notice in this particular equation that we're given, but it is actually also uh, in the form of the square root property. Recall that when you have the square term on one side and the constant on the other that you can solve using the square root property. Where here's our square term on one side, we have 5x minus 3 squared. And here's our constant on the other side, we have negative 3. So whenever we have it in that form, we can apply the square root property, which states that you will take the square root of both sides. Because remember with equations, what you do to one side, you have to also do to the other. And also recall from previous course that whenever you have a term square, the opposite of squaring a number is to find the square root of a number. And that process of doing the opposite is sort of undoes uh, this to where you are able to take the 5x minus 3 all by itself. So the left side equals 5x minus 3. And on the right side, we, hear, we have uh, the square root of a radical, uh, I'm sorry, the square root of negative 3, uh, which is, as you recall, remember this is not a real number. Uh, it's an imaginary number. We can go ahead and extract the negative 1 from uh, here, from this negative 3. And then what it would leave you with is plus or minus i radical 3. So keep in mind here that we are solving an equation for x. So what will be your next step to solve in this equation for x? That's correct. You would need to add 3 to each side. One last step to solve in this equation is to do what? That's correct. Divide by 5 and x equals 3 plus or minus i radical 3 all over 5. Another way to write your solution Note that on top in the numerator, you have two terms. You have 3 here, and on, over here you have i radical 3. They both share a denominator of 5. I can simply place both denominators under each term. If I place a 5 under the 3, I'm left with 3 fifths on the left side. On the right side, um, we had i radical 3. If I place a 5 under that, I can write it as radical 3 over 5 and simply place the i on the back here. That's also another way of writing it. Or you could also just leave it there out in front. But in either case, both forms are correct forms for writing your solution.